Unit 4.3 Practice Problems. A mixture of carbon monoxide and oxygen is placed in a container, as shown opposite. A reaction occurs, ca forming carbon dioxide. Which of the following best represents the contents of the box after the reaction has completely uh, finished? So the uh, dark circles are the carbons, the light circles are the uh, oxygens here, and we do have um, four uh, carbons, so we should eliminate anything where we don't have four carbons. That would be D, and we should also eliminate anything uh, that the main react uh, product is not carbon dioxide, and that would be option C. So looking between A and B, I can see that the only difference here is whether I have leftover oxygen or not. So that means I need to count how many oxygens I have present. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So since uh, B has the same number of reactants as products and also shows that I have a limiting reagent of the carbon monoxide where I don't have enough carbons to completely break apart all of the uh, oxygen molecules here. That is my best representation. So option choice B would be my answer. Which of the following particle diagrams best represents the products when four molecules of uh, hydrogen peroxide decompose into water and oxygen at uh, ga uh, oxygen gas at room temperature? So um, I am going to decompose into water and oxygen. So the water molecule should look something like this and the oxygen should look something like this. So I should look for a product where I end up with uh, that as my endpoint. B and A uh, do not have water molecules at all. C does have water molecules. However, um, my other product is going to be hydrogen gas rather than oxygen gas. And so that is going to be um, another problem there. Um, you could have also looked at the limiting reagent side of this reaction here where we had four uh, uh, peroxides going into it. So that means I should be able to create four going back. So this oxygen uh, could associate here, here, this one came from here, this one came from here. And we have the correct number of um, products indicating that our reactants was four hydrogen peroxides. The diagram opposite represents hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas in a closed container. Which of the following diagrams would represent the results if the reaction below uh, were to proceed as far as possible? So we have nitrogen plus hydrogen going to ammonia here. Um, so we are very much looking for the limiting reagent here. So if I need um, three hydrogens for every one nitrogen in the end, and I have six, then that means that I can only create two ammonias. So I am going to look for something that reflects that. I'm going to eliminate uh, any option choice that doesn't have ammonia as the actual product. So here we have hydrogen and nitrogen switched in their positioning. Again, hydrogen is this dark circle. Nitrogen is our lighter circle. So since B and C um, both don't have ammonia at all as their product, uh, that is definitely suspicious here. So I'm going to be able to create two ammonias. Uh, my remaining option choices all have two ammonias. That's great. Um, I should not be left with both of the reactants if it has proceeded as far as possible. So D is going to be eliminated as well. So now I am looking between option choice A and E. And this is going to be determined based off of uh, the number of remaining reactants. 
So here, um, I know that I can only make two ammonias based off of the number of hydrogens that I have present here. And so only two nitrogens are going to be used, meaning that there should be two nitrogens left. And so option choice E is the only one where that is true. Which of the following particulate diagrams best shows the formation of water vapor from hydrogen gas and oxygen gas in a rigid container at 125 degrees Celsius. So I should see hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Hydrogen and oxygen gases are both diatomic. So um, my initial particle diagram should be showing diatomic molecules. I don't see diatomics in A or in B. So then um, I am left with two diatomics here and then going to water. My differential between these two is going to be the sheer number of oxygens to hydrogens that I have present. So I am going to have to look to see um, how many I can realistically make. Here I have six oxygens and six waters. Here I have... Uh, uh, I have 12 oxygens here, so I should have 12 waters here. I don't have that. Um, and I also have uh, 12 um, hydrogens here, so I should only be able to make six waters, but I should be left with uh, uh, six total or three um three oxygens here. That's not present, so that's going to be eliminated. Here I have uh, six total oxygens, which gives me six total waters, and I have 12 total hydrogens, which would give me 12 total waters. So option choice C is the only one that uh, follows with the limiting reagents. A mixture of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas is placed in a container as represented opposite. The hydrogen and oxygen react to form water. Which of the following uh, best represents the container after the reaction has gone to completion? So um, I am looking at my limiting reagents here. So I can, uh, I have eight total hydrogens, which means that I can form four waters. And I have also eight total um, oxygens, which would mean that I could form uh, eight waters from the amount of oxygen. Uh, so my limiting region is going to be hydrogen, so I should not have any hydrogen left over in any of my uh, final viewpoints. I don't have any uh, that shown here, but I should have oxygen left over as a diatomic. So the um, only answer choice that has um, any oxygen left over as a diatomic is going to be option choice B. Um, and you could, of course, double check that by uh, checking to make sure that every everything balanced out. So we um, were only able to form four waters, which means that I should be left with uh, two uh, diatomic oxygens. And that is what is present here. So that is going to be our final correct answer.